Greetings, everybody, and welcome back to episode 44 of Extreme Evo Cast, an all-purpose book one podcast where we talk about news, trivia, and everything related to Pokemon. Uh, today is going to be the part two of our little discussion about the Ground Tundra. I know last time I said that I would uh, spend a little bit more time um, exploring around the Crown Tundra. I mean, at the time of recording the last episode, I only played the Crown Tundra for about six hours. Um, I got through most of the story, if you remember, but uh, in that time, I have played a little bit more, experienced a little bit more. We've learned a few more things about the Crown Tundra and what it in, what it entails. Uh, so I'd like to dedicate this episode to just talking about the sort of outliers. Um, even though it's after looking through the rest of the episode, not very much <laughs> as far as I could tell. Um, also, you'll have to forgive me. I do have to be a little bit quiet. I It's like four in the morning. Don't judge me. I, um, I am, I'm in the process of trying to make my sleep schedule a little bit better, but uh, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't you know it? I, I caught myself up a little bit late tonight, but it's okay. I still got it. I still want to do EvoCast. Uh, it's already a day late, so I'm just going to suck it up and do it. I'll get good sleep. Don't worry. I don't got a lot of stuff to do tomorrow. I'll be fine. I promise. Uh, anyway, yeah, so today is going to be the part two of our Crown Tundra discussion, but, uh, and because of that, I don't think that this episode is going to be very long, uh, just looking at the sort of things that I have to talk about, I don't think that I'm gonna really have anything much to talk about, uh, in the way of news, and I mean, that's okay, because honestly, there isn't really that much stuff going on in Pokemon in general right now, except for, you know, sort of the, after the release, the hype of the Crown Tundra, everything's sort of starting to slow down, and I think the same could be said about this podcast. Not that, uh, you know, I won't be bringing the best that I possibly can to, you know, keep keep my fans and, pe- and my listeners up to date with the latest Pokemon news and trivia <laughs> and things like that, um, as the title says. But, uh, you know, sort of this podcast goes with the, you know, sort of goes with the flow, goes with the, goes with the waves uh, of the Pokemon community and what the Pokemon team and Game Freak and stuff t- uh, tends to release and talk about. So um, not too much right now, like I said, sort of just, you know, the ebbing down from the hype of the release of the Crown Tundra, and I think that that's okay. Next, uh, next episode, though, I will say, is one to be excited about. I will say, uh, because next episode, or at least I hope, if I manage to find the free time to finish playing through it on my streams, twitch.tv slash lilyseon, you can watch me play and eventually talk about on this podcast Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. Um, I haven't been in the process of playing through the game, on my streams, like I said, twitch.tv slash lilyseon. Um, it's been great fun, <laughs> and I know that next time, or as soon as I'm done with the game, like I said, that I find the free time to um, to play through the game, that I will talk about it on this, on this uh, podcast, and I'm very, very excited to do just that, uh, because Pokemon XD has a great, great place in my heart, and I've been enjoying the heck out of it, playing it over on my, on my streams. Um, so yeah, uh, you can get excited for that. So this is sort of a, you know, um, calm before the storm, sort of in, in a good way, in a good light, uh, before we get into the big beef of Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness and my thoughts and playthrough of it, uh, we're just going to finish up sort of collecting the, the leftovers that we, that we, uh, left last episode. But that of course does not mean that we don't have any news to talk about. Let's get into it. So, um, starting with probably the most uninteresting and, you know, not who cares sort of news. You know, I think if news, if if Pokemon news and information went on a scale of how interesting it was, this would be the who cares tier. Who cares tier? Uh, It's Dragon type month. According to the Pokemon Twitter, it is Dragon type month. (laughs) Like I said, uh, they, I mean, it's maybe, maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit higher than, than then who cares? Maybe like, kind of, <laughs> you know, a little bit interesting tier, um, because they tend to go through the Pokemon Twitter, of course, being they, uh, they, you know, they post gifts, they post videos, they post pictures of dragon type Pokemon throughout the anime and all that sort of stuff. And just like make memes about them and talk about them. Like, is it, it's, you know, it's a gif of someone rubbing down, washing down a, a, a tyrant, and the caption is, don't forget to wash your face before bed trainers, you know, it's nothing actually still manages to get 
10.2 thousand view, uh, likes. But you know, it's it's nothing actually important. But it, it's nice to see. I you know you I can appreciate it. It's very cute. Very uh, sort of keeps things active while uh, nothing is going on. Like I said. Uh, so yeah, they they sort of do this every month. Last month I. Th- Probably I can guess, if I remember correctly, was Ghost Type Month because it was October, but November, the month of November, is Dragon Type Month, according to the Pokemon Twitter. So if you want to see your favorite Dragon Type Pokemon uh, in GIF form, and I guess also meme form, head over to the Pokemon Twitter. Something I will say, and you might be thinking, hey, Lily, where is Twilight Wings, episode 8? You said you were going to talk about it this episode. Well, I lied. <laughs> That's not not not, uh, not something that I that I wanted to lie about, but I lied. I lied to my 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 loving fans, and I apologize. Uh, no, it, it's just uh, it's not out yet. I thought it was coming out earlier. Like I thought it was going to be out by now, but it's not. It's it, it. There's literally a tweet that I'm looking at right here that says uh, Twilight Wings episode eight is coming out on the seventeenth. But, um. There is the Japanese version, and, you know, I, I wasn't about to go in and watch it in Japanese before it comes out in English. So next next episode, most likely, we'll talk about Twilight Wings Episode 8, and I'm very, very excited to, to, to talk about it then and watch it even. Uh, but no, it's not out yet. It is, uh, it, is, it is coming out on the 17th, so you can expect it next time. Something big that I actually did not even know about i i i cannot remember for the life of me if i talked about this before but there is a thing called pokemon tv and apparently over on the on the oh god i just started it Uh, i was i was looking at it before i just clicked play um apparently there is a a place on the Pokemon website, Pokemon.com, uh, wa- sorry, watch.pokemon.com, where you can watch every single episode of Pokemon. Y- you can watch, uh, okay, first of all, not every single po- Pokemon episode. You can watch up to season one, or season one, season two, season three, uh, and season four, which is the... Um, Season 1 and 2, I believe, is the first generation, and then 3 and 4 is the second generation, and then there's also 20, 21, and 22, which is Alola, and then also Journeys, which is season 23, and also, I suppose, Twilight Wings, Origins, Generations, as well as, for some reason, also Pokemon Lucario and the Mystery of Mew. <laughs> not sure why that's there, but I'm not complaining about it. Uh, so if you ever want to watch the original Pokemon game series, I know there are probably some other places that are easy to watch, but they're right here on Pokemon TV. Something that I honestly did not know about and might actually watch the anime on. Uh, I, you know, I have a soft spot for the first few seasons of the anime, so I am, um, you know, I might, I might do just that. Uh, on the light of last week, we talked about the. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I keep bumping my microphone. Uh, we talked about the Ash Hat Pik- or the, you know, the, yeah, the Ash Hat Pikachu's from every generation of Pokemon. Well, the final and uh, the final and eighth of the Cap Pikachu uh, is obtainable. It is. Uh, it says having been shown during today's Pokemon anime episode in Japan, the World Cap Pikachu making its first ever appearance can be attained with the code Kin Pika eighteen fifty five. Uh, the eyes in Kin Pika, and also uh, are ones, and then it's Kin Pika in all caps, eighteen fifty five. Uh, the code can be redeemed until November thirtieth, and unlike the previous Pikachu, this one holds a light ball. Uh, I looked far and wide on Serebii. I cannot find the original post that that mentioned this, but it was something that um. Something, something that that's going on in Pokemon Go right now. Um, people are seeing that they have started to add Kalos Pokemon, uh, the data at least for Kalos Pokemon into Pokemon Go. So, you know, <laughs> I don't think much can be said about that. Obviously, they're eventually going to add Kalos. They're catching up real quick uh, with Gen Five out. Kalos is, I assume, on its way very, very soon. Um, but yeah, people have been people have been data mining, sort of. Uh, People have been 
looking into Pokemon Go and finding that there's Kalos Pokemon data in there. And as well as with Pokemon Go, there's also the um, the link with Pokemon Home is finally live. You can finally transfer your Pokemon into uh, in, from Pokemon Go into Pokemon Home and with that into Pokemon Sword and Shield. Um, you can also get Gigantamax Melmetal. Uh, using this method, I believe it's just like a gift you get for transferring a Pokemon from uh, from Go to Home. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but I have heard some mixed feelings about this. I've heard uh, I've heard some um, some things that like the, the whole pay to win aspect of it is very annoying <laughs> and very, uh, very cheap at least on the uh, on Pokemon's part. I haven't had a chance to do it myself and I will let you know if I do do that uh, or know any more information about it. But like I've heard, I've seen some people over on Twitter complaining that um, that it sucks or that it's, it's annoying. You know, transferring a legendary is essentially like you have to, you either have to wait like a bunch of days or like just pay like a hundred dollars, you know, to transfer. Obviously not that much. That's a little bit of exaggeration, but like, you have to tr- you have to pay a lot of money uh, to sort of with like the pay to win you know like oh regain your energy kind of thing you have to pay a lot of money to transfer all these Pokemon um, you know your shiny legendaries and stuff like that or you have to wait like a week for each Pokemon which is absolutely ridiculous in my opinion but you know hey they got to make money somehow not that I think that it's good or that they should continue doing it but. Um, I've just seen some people complaining about it. I will let you know if I ever find any more information about it or decide to try myself, but you know, just some food for thought. (laughs) It's live though. Uh, you can now transfer your Pokemon from Pokemon Go Go to Pokemon Home, and you can also get yourself a Gigantamax and Melmetal in the process. Pokemon Center, the, uh, the, you know, the online and also physical store for, uh, for Pokemon is coming to Canada. It says Pokemon Center Canada will now sh- or the yeah Pokemon Center website will now ship to Canada uh, through a special portal of PokemonCenter.ca. To celebrate this for a limited time, all people who make an order of over twenty dollars in the Pokemon Center website in the U.S. or Canada will receive a special delivery Pikachu promo card while stocks last. Um, it's very cute. It's it's a special Pokemon card with special delivery Pikachu on it. <laughs> So yeah, uh, if you are interested in getting yourself this card or you just live in Canada and want to order something from the Pokemon Center website, now you can. Hurrah. Still not in the UK though, (laughs) which sucks. Uh, Next up, we have some very minuscule news. Remember, like I said, on the bottom of the spectrum in terms of interest of, uh, of Pokemon news. First of all, Gengar is in Pokemon Cafe Mix. You know I gotta update you on the Cafe Mix Pokemon. Next up, there is a new line of uh, of iOS stickers for Pokemon. Very interesting. I will take a look at them right now, live. Oh, they're very cute. They're in Japanese, but I assume they will be translated to English if they are not already. Um, but they, you know, they're stickers. You can use them now with uh, line Pokemon line stickers. For those of you who have the social media app Line on your iOS, Android, oh, it's not just Android, iOS, it's Android or Windows mobile devices, the Pokemon Company have put out some, Pokemon Company, the Pokemon Company have put out some new stickers for Japan. These stickers are somewhat customizable and features various Pokemon or and trainers throughout Pokemon history. They cost $1.99 or 250 um, yen. Very cute. I hope they will be translated to English at some point doesn't look like they are as far as I can tell now but they're very cute and finally uh probably the most interesting thing in my opinion something not uh you know exactly monumental but uh Pokemon has confirmed that the voice actor for Mewtwo uh in the original Mewtwo Strikes Back as well as Mewtwo Strikes Back Evolution uh is coming to the uh the newest episode of the pokemon go anime or pokemon go anime the pokemon anime um the original voice actor i i i assume yeah it's it's the japanese voice actor uh who knows about the english translation but uh it's cool that the original voice actor is is getting a a part in the in the newest episode 
And that is going to pretty much do it for news for today. Let's move on to everyone's favorite segment where we talk about a random Pokemon every episode. And uh, this Pokemon on the chopping block today is number 159. I'm going to give those of you who like to guess a little bit of time to guess who it is. Or I guess you could just pause the episode. It's Croconaw. (laughs) Croconaw is a water-type Pokemon introduced in Generation 2. It evolves from Totodile starting at level 18 and evolves into Freligator at level 30. I am not going to go into the evolution patterns. I was just reminded, I was like, huh, level 30, that's interesting. And then I remembered that way, way long time ago. On like episode, what, like 7 or 8 or whatever? Um, <laughs> I talked about the... Um, the relationship between the starter evolution lines and you know sort of like how they how they change throughout the the game how uh, throughout the games and like oh my god i'm not going to go into that again dude <laughs> why wow uh i talked for a long time about that and i mean they're really interesting if you don't know what i'm talking about just go look at what evolution or what level every starter evolves at and what they subsequent you know subsequently uh evolve into to their final evolution it's very odd Anyway, uh, Croconaw is, of course, the second evolution, uh, the middle stage of, uh, of, of Totodile and Fralligator. We've, we've had a lot of middle stages on this podcast, I feel like. I feel like Random Pokemon of the Week has had a, a myriad of second stage, awkward teenager stage Pokemon instead of the cool <laughs> final stages and also the cute first stages. Uh, but, you know, not that I'm really complaining very much whenever whenever I get a chance to talk about a starter Pokemon or a Pokemon that is more favored uh, when it comes to popularity is something that I can look forward to. So, Croconaw has the Torrent ability and also Sheer Force as its hidden ability. Gender ratio, like all starters, is 87.5 male, 12, 12.5% female. It is 3 foot 7 or 1.1 meters and 55.1 pounds or 25 kilograms. Uh, for alligator is, uh, for alligator, yeah, let's talk about for alligator instead. No, uh, Croconaw, Cro- he's cute. I like Croconaw. I think that, um, I'm not really a huge fan of Totodile personally or for alligator. I mean, I definitely think that they are cool and they are worth talking about, but I myself prefer Chikorita. Um, and I would, I would also say that I like Cyndaquil more than, uh, than Totodile, but that does not mean that I don't appreciate Croconaw for what it is. It's the big jaw Pokemon, and it has exactly that. Beautiful, majestic red uh, scales and spines on its back. Like a dinosaur, but also somehow like a crocodile. Who knows what this thing is? Uh, let's see. Because I know that I'm not going to be talking about my... Uh, we're not going to be talking about the competitive viability of a middle stage evolution from Generation 2... We can go into its stats. HP stat of 65. Uh, an a- attack and defense of 80. Weirdly enough, a special attack of 59, a special defense of 63, and a speed of 58 for a total of 405. Let's look at some trivia about Croconaw. Croconaw? Oh. Uh, due to the censor that prevents Pokemon with obs- obs- offensive nicknames from being traded onto the GTS, an English language Croconaw cannot be traded to the GTS without a nickname in Pokemon Black and White. Huh? From what? Wh- what is the censor? What is what is the the bad word? Hold on, I need to I. Excuse me for looking up bad words on this on this family friendly podcast, but hold on, I need to figure this out. I'm gonna just type in like Croconaw's name sort of as it goes. Does it include anything that's bad? What? What what name what part of Croconaw's name is a, is like a swear? So cut to about five minutes ago. <laughs> uh, apparently it's the word con. C-O-N. Now listen, from where I come from, which is the good old U.S. of A, that is not something that I have ever heard, 
to be a bad word. And I mean, if that's like a horrible slur, then I'm so sorry. But like con means like, you know, like a con man to con somebody is to like swindle them, you know, like pull a like pull a hustle. But like con C-O-N just just con a con is something that already exists so like again i apologize if this is like a horrible thing that i'm saying to some in some other language or some other sort of you know um uh, some other area of the world but like that's really funny that croconaw is censored because of that who knows man i certainly don't anyway let's get away from swear words and bad things let's go on to that's it. That's all the trivia, by the way. <laughs> it's the only trivia that Croconaw has going for it. Uh, let's go on to the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon um, remarks. So, in Red Rescue Team and Blue Rescue Team, from 51% to 100% HP, it says, doesn't matter if I lose my fangs, they grow back in. From half to quarter, they say, my health is getting down to around half. <laughs> it's great. Words of wisdom right there. Uh, from quarter to to 1%. I'm exhausted. I can't open my jaws. And then from a, on a level up, he says, Leveled up, I can feel more fangs growing in. I don't know if that's a good thing, buddy. You don't want too many teeth in that big mouth of yours. You, I mean, I guess, that's what he, I guess it is what he wants. Anyway, let's move on to... Let's look at some Pokemon, Pokedex entries. Uh... I guess with, with the fangs, if it loses a fang, a new one grows back in its place. There are always 48 fangs lining its mouth. Jesus Christ, that's a lot of teeth. Also, and it's, no way, listen, I'm looking at it at an anime screenshot of Croconaw opening its mouth. It's only got four in there. It lied to me. That's about, you, you, you promised me 12 times the amount that it actually is. I feel swindled. Uh, it opens its huge jaw, hu his huge jaws wide when attacking. If it loses any fangs while biting, they grow back in. I guess that's its whole thing, huh? Once its cl jaws clamp down on its foe, it will absolutely not let go. Because the tip of its fangs are forked back like fish hooks. Oh my god. They become irremovably embedded. That's horrible. Yeah, I mean, that's it. That's everything. Once Croconaw has... Cl yeah. That's it. It's all, like those are the three Pokedex entries that every single, every single entry has from now on. I guess that's all they need, huh? It's like, listen, its fangs grow back, it won't let go, and it has forty-eight of them. <laughs> so that, that's all you need. That's all you need to know about Croconaw. Whoever wrote the Pokedex entries for this Pokemon in Generation Two were like, "Yep, that's it. Every single one is like they're perfect. No need for a change. There's everything is perfect about this Pokemon." Anyway, uh, last but not least, let's go on to the shiny. Let's rate. Let's rate this shiny for Croconaw. It pulls a big game, big mouth, big jaw. Let's see if a shiny can match up to it. Uh, so, I actually quite like it. Um, Totodile and the Totodile line, I suppose, has a shiny that is pretty much universal. Uh, it's one of those. It's one of those Pokemon that like it's it's shiny sort of carries out uh, throughout the entire throughout its entire line and yeah i just looked at totodile and for alligator and can confirm that they are all exactly the same uh the blue on croconaw turns into a like a sea foam green i guess is the best way that i can explain it and then the the, the yellow on it stays the same but the spines on its back uh, and tail i guess turn into a bright blue which is very nice to complement the sort of sea foam green that it's got going on uh, and honestly, I really enjoy it. I think it's, uh, I think that this is a very good shiny form. I mean, you know, it's simple. It does what it does. It's, it's uh, stays throughout its entire evolution. It doesn't change too much, but what it does change is very contrasted. It's very nice. It goes from being blue and red to just green and blue, I guess. Um, yeah, pretty solid in, in all, all things considered. I, I don't think that this necessarily... Uh, demotes a bad review, a bad score, but I definitely don't think that it's like insanely, uh, insanely high because you know nothing, nothing really too special going about it. It's just nice. It's nice to look at, nice on the eyes, uh, but it doesn't do anything more than really that. So I'm gonna give it a seven out of ten. All right, now 25 minutes in, 
we're on the main topic of the episode. Like I said, this episode's probably not going to be too long because in all honesty, we're probably already past the bulk of the stuff that we're going to discuss today. Um, uh, like I said, I just wanted to sort of touch on the final few things that I didn't really say about the Grand Tundra and give sort of my final conclusion. Um, so two things that I left out um, were the birds. The Galarian birds. I don't think I talked about them. Uh, they were cool. They were very fun. I, um, <laughs> listen, okay, I made a fatal, fatal, I made a, a very, very dumb flaw that made me look like an absolute moron on stream, and I'm still not happy about it. I still feel, I still get red-faced whenever I think about it. Listen, okay, Sonia. Sonia is in the Crown Tundra, and she gives you, alongside Peony, she gives you a goal. You look at footprints on the ground, almost like the diglets. You gotta, you gotta get fifty of each of them, one hundred fifty in total, um, just like the diglets. But they're much more easy to find, thank God. Um, evidence, footprints, evidence of the grassland Pokemon, the cavern Pokemon, and the Iron Will Pokemon. And me, being t on drugs, I think. Uh, as far as I can tell from my, my, what I did that day, that fateful day, I was like, okay, this is for the birds. This is for, this is for the Galarian birds. This is the grassland one is Zapdos. The iron wheel Pokemon is Articuno and the cavern Pokemon is Moltres. I don't know what, what went through my head, you know, even thinking about it now, I think that it's maybe a little bit reasonable, but I was not a very smart person that day. And I sort of went with that mentality for the entire time. And I was like, okay, listen, I got all the, oh, I was like, oh, I got all the iron will. I got all the evidence for Articuno. Now I can get Articuno. That's it. I'm like, I did it. Articuno is going to show up somewhere. Who knows? Uh, you know, with a cavern Pokemon, I'm like, okay, well, I did it. I got, I got all of them. Now Moltres is going to show up and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, as it turns out, that is not what it is, and I could not have been more wrong. <laughs> um, the Grassland Pokemon, the Cavern Pokemon, and the Iron Will Pokemon are for Verizian, Terrakian, and Kovalian, respectively. Um, and I gotta say, I um, once you finish getting all the evidence, Sonya tells you it's like, oh, the Iron Will Pokemon appears in uh, appears in the you know the lake, the frozen lake, the glacier lake, and I was like, okay. I can go there to catch Articuno, right? And I go up there and Cobalion spawns. And I'm like, oh my god, Cobalion? What are you doing here, buddy? So I, you know, I uh, I fight him. I catch him, I'm pretty sure. Either that or I left him because I'm pretty sure I already have those three. Um, I was like, oh my god, Cobalion's here. And I didn't think anything of it. And then I was like, okay, Articuno's not here. What the heck is going on? Something's wrong here. And I still, I still didn't put two and two together. And it was finally when I got... The all the grassland evidence, and I and I found out that that you know Sonya was like, oh, the grassland Pokemon spawns in the giant seat. Um, when I started to connect two and two together, because when you activate the Galarian birds cutscenes, uh, Peony tells you, or somebody tells you, that Articuno went to the Crown Tundra, Moltres goes to the Isle of Armor, and. Uh, Zapdos goes to the mainland the, you know somewhere else and I was like well hold on a second if Zapdos is in the giant seat or whatever the giant's bed why would it be in the mainland uh, and I was like something is not right here and then it hit me and then it hit me God, after six hours of thinking that that was the case it finally hit me as soon as I saw Verizian spawn in the grassland I'm like I'm, I am the biggest idiot alive I think um, thank God I finally figured it out. Uh, I went and I caught Zapdos, I caught Articuno, I caught Moltres. It was a fun time. Um, they each sort of had a puzzle to go along with them. Zap Zapdos was very fast, sort of a roaming Pokemon, just sped around the wild area. No stopping this lad. Uh, very high speeds, and but you know, you sort of had to juke him to catch up to him. Uh, Moltres, I'm pretty sure, just attacked you, like, simple as that. Didn't even really have, like, a puzzle. Just like, okay, I see you. Let's go, dude. Um, and Articuno had sort of, like, a guessing game kind of thing. He split into, like, three copies. You had to guess which one is actually him. Either that or just ride around in a circle until you get the right one. Um, and it, it was fine. You know, it was easy. Catching them was, you know, easy, like it goes. It felt good to finally have another 
legendary Pokemon, like roaming legendary to catch. Because if you if you failed, if you killed them on accident or you ran out of balls or whatever, um, they went away for a while, and then you had to come back later and catch them again. And it was, it felt very akin to the roaming legendaries of the older games. And I, I very much appreciated it. I think that it was very um, intuitive. Articuno especially, because Articuno being in the Crown Tundra, you had to find it. And if you missed it, like if, if you failed the puzzle and it flew away, it would just go to some random place in the Crown Tundra. And then you'd have to go look for it, uh, which I think was the most fun part of their whole arc. You know, their whole, their whole, their whole thing uh, was looking for Articuno. But other than that, uh, very cool addition to the story. You know, obviously one of the three big legendary sort of stories, uh, you know, story points along with the Calyrex one and the Regis. Um, I really liked it. Like I said, it felt it felt very akin to older Pokemon games, and all around a wonderful addition to the to the DLC. I you know you know how I feel about the Galarian Birds. I think they're awesome. Zapdos is my favorite. I think that they're really cool. <laughs> uh, I'm I think they're they're a very good addition Pokemon wise and also uh, story wise. If you can even really call it a story, but you know what I mean. And finally, the last thing that we really have to talk about for the Crown Tundra, uh, other than my final conclusion at the end, is the Regis. Um, see, the Regis for me were sort of different because I uh, I went through them later. You know, I didn't I didn't do them right away. Like I said, I sort of stopped before I got to got a chance to do the Regis, um, and then I. You know, I uh, and then I went back later after the stream, uh, another stream. I um, I did another stream recently where I did uh, I did some shiny hunting and Dynamax adventures, which was very fun. I enjoy the process of shiny hunting and the Dynamax adventures. It's very fun to shiny hunt and also do like multiplayer stuff at the same time. Uh, very very entertaining shiny hunt method, though it does take a long time. But the odds are so high. Um, that I think it's worth it, and I think it's really fun. I did manage to get a shiny. I got a shiny Sceptile. No shiny Legendaries, unfortunately, but, uh, you know, that's for another day. But after I did that, after that stream, another one of these days, I forget when exactly it was, I went back and I did all of the Reggie's, um, stuff. I did all their, I did all their, all their store, all their puzzles and stuff, um, you know, because if you don't know about the Crown Tundra, you have to go to the different temples around the Crown Tundra and solve these puzzles that the Regis have. Um, Reggie Steel, you have to whistle, I believe, in front of the temple. Reggie Ice, you have to bring a cryogonal um, in your party or following you. And then for Reggie Rock, you have to have your the lead Pokemon that you're, that you're in your party hold an Everstone, which is good. Uh, it, it took me a little while to actually figure them out. I tried to... Uh, I tried to figure them out myself. Reggie Seals took me the longest, and actually the only one that I did on stream. Um, Reggie Rocks was pretty understandable if you know what you're doing in Pokemon. Uh, if you know what an Everstone is, you know, it wasn't too difficult. And then Cryogonals was a piece of cake, or Reggie Ices, I guess, was a piece of cake because, you know, what other Pokemon? It's like a hexagonal ice crystal that, you know, it's like, oh, have a. Literally, the puzzle, I think, is like, have a ice crystal follow you. And it's like, okay, it's Cryogonal. Um,. But uh, even without the puzzles, the fighting them and capturing them were fun. Um, I like I said, it brings me back to fighting the Reggies in Generation Three, uh, fighting the Reggies in I believe they were in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, weren't they? Um, but you know, it, it brings me back to the days of, of fighting legendary Pokemon, catching legendary Pokemon, bringing them down, par paralyzing them, whatever whatever it may be. Uh, good times very good memories associated with that sort of process and it really it did really click that nostalgia uh button for me uh though i will say i did reset after i caught them uh because i eventually plan on shiny hunting for them uh i also did reggie Alecki and reggie dragos i didn't catch either of them i sort of just went in interacted with them and then i you know i i was tired for the day so i stopped um and I, I, you know, I didn't catch them either. I reset after I was done because I wanted, I want a shiny hunt for them at some point. But I did sort of get the gist of it, you know, that that's all that you really need to do. And I don't know actually what happens if you complete all the legendary 
story arcs for Peony because I realize now that I never actually did that. Um, <laughs> I'm sure it's nothing special, but, uh, you know, I don't necessarily think that that's needed to be known to enjoy and to sort of bring my conclusion to the Crown Tundra. Uh, and I do know that you can get Reggie Gigas if you have the rest of the totems in your party, which is fun. I think you get him by going to a certain den, I think, like in the giant's bed or, you know, it's a convoluted process. It's it's not uh, anything too out of the box, but it is definitely not something that's super easy, I think, to figure out. And I'm glad that online tutorials exist um but yeah i mean the reggie the reggies were, were fun i'm really glad they added new reggies it's you know never never ever did i think they were going to add more after reggie gigas and why was i proven wrong you know that's that's cool they're fun they're you know they come from my home uh, they come from my my favorite my favorite region so you know that i'm glad to see them sort of expanding that that story point and uh adding more of the titans to the game now is the time uh, to give my final thoughts about the Grand Tundra. I already sort of did last episode. Um, I think that it's safe to say I don't think it's going to surprise anybody by the tone of my voice and how I've sort of been talking about it. Um, I think it was wonderful. I think it was great. I think it was beautiful. I think it was uh, the story sort of structure, having these main like three, I guess four also, with Sonya's whole evidence thing going on. Uh, was 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 fun. It sort of felt like you could choose your own adventure. You know, you could do whatever you wanted, uh, as well as sort of doing the main story beat that is Calyrex and his whole his whole deal. Uh, but they all they all they all felt like uh, standalone stories, standalone adventures, uh, sort of packed into the same area, which is a good thing because, like I said, there was a lot of choice. You know, some people might have been excited and done the Reggies right away, but I personally waited until after I was done with everything else before I did them, you know. Um, unlike the Isle of Armor, that was very one main storyline focused uh, through most of it with the dojo and then Cub Fu and stuff, um, but also giving you a little bit of choice. I think that having the choice just sort of being in picking your path uh, or doing things whenever you wanted for the Crown Tundra was a really, really great uh, idea and it, it sort of felt very uh very experimental and honestly a great time um personally i liked the crown tundra more than the isle of armor that might come from my love of icy landscapes and snowy regions and things like that but uh, i think that also just in terms of of fun and enjoying things uh, i did i think i did find myself enjoying the crown tundra a little bit more than the isle of armor um and what else is there to say? I mean, it was beautiful, uh, amazingly written. The characters were great. I talked about a lot of this stuff last episode. So if you want to hear my more overall feelings about most of these things, you can listen to last episode if you haven't already. Um, but sort of a final conclusion. I think that the Pokemon they added to the region are fun. Uh, I'm glad to see more Pokemon in the game, obviously. It's not all of them yet. Uh, I say yet with a, with a glint of hope in my eye, but, uh, you know, it's not all of them, but the ones that they did add, you know, what that adds to the, to the, the Pokemon competitive meta and all the Pokemon that were added, uh, are sort of a whole other can of worms that I might tackle in another episode, but I don't think there's much to be said. Um, you know, they added a bunch of fan favorites back, a bunch of Pokemon, um, coming back with this update. And uh, it's all good times, you know, just sort of just sort of adding icing onto the cake that was Sword and Shield. And I think that the Crown Tundra did a great job at being a, a beautiful and very, very fun DLC. And I hope, you know, I, like I am excited to see what they do in the future. All right, before we end this shorter episode for today... Let's go into the final segment for today, everyone's favorite segment, when we talk about a random move every episode, Move Tutor. Uh, this, today's number, or this, today's move, I believe if I remember my random number generator correctly, 509? I doubt that anyone would be able to guess this, and if you do, get a life. <laughs> I think that if you know the exact number of every move in in the game uh according to its you know sort of number system other than me who has to do it you know has to randomly generate them from the list every every two weeks i think that that's reasonable but if you just know this off the back of your hand then i think that you might have a problem uh but no, number 509 circle throw circle throw 
overhead throw in Japanese is a damage dealing fighting type move introduced in Generation 5. Uh, I believe this is the is this the signature move of throw? Is it? Uh, I don't think so. I always sort of I saw throw always using this. There's only four Pokemon that can use this move, by the way. Or I guess by leveling up, it's Polyrath, Throw, and then Pancham and Pangoro, and then even then, Kangaskhan, Whimsor, Buneary, Riolu, and Clubopus are all the only other Pokemon that can learn this move. So, uh, not a very diverse move, I must say. <laughs> um, sort of an obscure one, if that. Uh, Circle Throw has 10 PP, a power of 60, an accuracy of 90%, and a priority of negative 6. Uh, Circle Throw inflicts damage and has decreased priority. In a trainer battle, it will switch out the target for the next Pokemon in line that has not fainted if there is one. Uh, in a wild Pokemon battle with a single wild Pokemon, this move will cause the battle to end if the user's level is equal or greater than the target's. However, if there is multiple wild Pokemon in the battle, it works the same as in a trainer battle. If using this move causes the user to faint, such as the, such as the target is holding a rocky helmet or has the ability rough skin, the target will not be forced to switch. Circle throw will fail to end wild Pokemon battles or switch out the opposing trainer's Pokemon if the target has the ability suction cups, is under the effects of ingrain, or has substitute set up. Uh, when used on a Dynamax or Gigantamax Pokemon, Circle Throw will deal damage but not force the target to switch out. Uh, in the description, the user throws the target and drags out another Pokemon in its party. In the wild, the battle ends. And I think that's pretty much it. Uh, there's a little bit of trivia here. In the anime, Circle Throw is depicted as a judo technique called Tomonage, in which the attacker grabs the opponent by their head and falls back using the combined forces of their legs and inertia to throw the opponent over their head. Jesus Christ, that sounds uh, brutal. Uh, but yeah, it's always nice to see uh, a move that has at least a little bit of interesting sort of, you know, um, <laughs> synergy with some other things. Like, oh, you know, if they faint, uh, it, like with Rocky Helmet or, or Iron Barbs or, uh, you know, or Rough Skin, uh, it doesn't it doesn't switch them out. Or like if, you know, if it's a double wild battle, it works the same as in a trainer. It's always nice to see a move that's not just like, oh, it does damage and has like a 30% chance to put like to par par paralyze you know uh something a little bit more interesting pokemon moves tend to be either a hit or a miss when it comes to being interesting uh and i think that circle throw is one of those that could be argued to be a hit just because of how interesting it is i mean it's essentially just fighting type dragon tail um but or whatever that move is i forget if it's dragon tail uh the one that's the dragon type move that switches you out you know it, it's essentially a fighting type version of that move but you know that in itself has a little bit of uh, a little bit of fun synergies that I think is interesting to talk about, and why I really enjoy doing move tutor every episode. All right, and with that, I hope you have enjoyed listening to this shorter episode of Extreme Evo Cast. Next week, uh, I hope, or next episode, I hope to have a much more interesting episode for you with the talk about Pokemon XD. If that is the case, I can't promise that I'll have time uh, to finish the game before then, but. Judging by how long the game is and how my streams have been going, uh, I don't doubt that I'll be able to finish it by then. And of course, if you want to watch it live, uh, be sure to catch my stream at twitch.tv slash lilyseon. We're about halfway through the game, uh, so you can uh, you can obviously still watch the VOD. Uh, eventually, I assume I'll upload the VODs and the, the, you know, the highlights and stuff to my YouTube channel. So if you're really interested in watching me play through this game, there are many ways that you can. Um, uh, but yeah, with that, I thank you all so much for listening. I hope you all have an amazing rest of your week, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye!